In this video, we're going to continue our journey by configuring SourceNet on the Palo Alto firewall to do source address translation when clients on the 1010 network try to go out to the internet. So in our playlist, we are right here. And if you missed any of these previous videos, there's a link in the description for this entire playlist. So you can jump back to any of the videos you want to check out. So for this video, let's set up source address translation. So if traffic is coming into the firewall from the 10.10.0 network and trying to go out to the internet, let's go ahead and swap out the source IP address with the existing IP address that's right here on interface one slash four. So in some vendors environments, that's referred to as PAT, port address translation, or overload. And on the Palo Alto firewall, when we do that same technique, it's referred to as DIPP, which is an acronym for dynamic IP and port. So we could have thousands of devices on the inside all mapping to this one globally routable address. And on the firewall here in this configuration is 23.1.2.19 that we'll be leveraging for that address translation. So let's head over to the firewall and configure source NAT. So on the Palo Alto firewall, the NAT is implemented as a policy. So at the top, we'll click on the policies tab up here. And then on the left, we'll click on NAT. And that way we can add our rules to our NAT policy. So with NAT on the left selected, there are no NAT rules by default. So we'll click on add. And for this NAT rule, I'm going to call it SNAT for source NAT in to out. And the conditions regarding this NAT rule, I'm going to say the original packet, if it's entering the firewall on an interface associated with the inside zone, and from a routing perspective, if that traffic is going to be forwarded out of an interface associated with the outside security zone. And I also want to lock this down to service provider A for this demo. So it's going to be interface one slash four. And let's also throw in the source address here. Let's say if the source address is, I'll click on add. Let me add a new address object. And I'll call this address object subnet 10.10. .10, and it's 10.10.0.0 with a 24-bit mask. And we'll click on OK. And besides using an address object, we could also have just typed in the address or the subnet here. And the benefit of using an address object, like the one we just created right here, is that if you're going to use it over and over again, you don't have to retype it in over and over again. You can just call upon that object you created. So this says, if the traffic is coming into the firewall on the inside zone and being routed out of the outside zone, specifically via interface one slash four, and the source address is coming from the 10.10.0 subnet, then we'll click on the translated packet. We want to do source address translation. We want to use dynamic IP and port. We want to go ahead and use the IP address that's on the interface. And the specific interface is ethernet one slash four. And from that interface, the IP address is 23.1.2.19 and done. And we'll click on OK. And then we'll move this from the candidate config to the running config by clicking on commit and commit one more time. So while that commit is happening, we'd also want to, before we leave this video, we'd want to test and verify that we have the correct syntax for that NAT rule. So here at the firewall, we can do a quick test to verify our NAT rule, either here in the GUI at the firewall or at the command line. And because we have a few moments, let's go ahead and do both. So let's go to the command line first here at the firewall to test our NAT policy. So here at the command line, if we want to test a policy, we can go ahead and just type in test. And I just did a question mark for context sensitive help. And if you want to test a NAT policy, we type in test NAT dash policy match. And then we'll say from, and we want to test it from traffic coming into the firewall on the inside zone. And if traffic is being routed out of an interface associated with the outside zone, and we'll do a question mark for more help. And if the source address is something on the 10.10.0 subnet, like 10.10.0.say 51, and a question mark, and then we'll say destination is 8.8.8.8, and a question mark, and we'll say protocol is one, that's ICMP, and press enter. And what that's showing us is that we have a match based on our NAT policy rules. And specifically, the match is on this rule in our NAT policy called SNAT into out. And if you want to test it from the GUI, we can do that as well. So if we click on policies and NAT right here from our NAT policy, we can use the arrows down here. Now, if your font's a little smaller, this actually would fit at the very bottom here, but since mine's a little bit bigger, it has a double arrows to the right to show more. So here we can click on test policy match. And because we started off on the net policies, that's what it's showing us. So here we can say from the inside, going to the outside, source address 10.10.0.51. Let's say it's 8888. And then for the protocol, I'm going to say ICMP, which is protocol number one. That way I don't have to put the ports in and we'll click on execute. So here it's showing us the match. And one other way of getting to the same kind of thing is to go to device and on the left, go down to troubleshooting, which is right here. And then once again, from the dropdown, just select the testing you want to do, put in the same values and you'll get the same results. 
So now that we've configured and verified our source NAT configuration here on the firewall, does that mean that clients can access the internet? And the answer is no, <laughs> because by default, the firewall is not allowing traffic over the data plane. In order to permit traffic, we need to have at least one security policy rule that says, please allow the traffic from clients down here trying to go out to the internet. So if you're still with me, that's fantastic because in our next video, we get to configure our security policy rules to allow the traffic from the users on the 1010 network to go out to the internet. So I'll see you there in just a moment.